Tell me one thing, do leaders get burnt out? Of course they do. Of course they do. What was it quality he noticed in you? So was it hard work, long hours, non-complaining? We'll come back to the intangible. So he spoke to me twice and he said, Nishal, I think you can do much more than what you are doing. While I was doing compliance, I always felt that it was important for me to not stick to what I was kind of supposed, supposed to do. With these leadership people, one thing that I think is they are ruthless with themselves. You will never find them saying, I'm a human, it's okay. Over a period of our life journey and especially career, you had a very um, unique uh, career choice that you had, that you worked closely with leaders. Yeah. And uh, which is a, a difficult rope to walk. It's great that, you know, a big boss ka admi <laughs> offices mein hota hai. The point is, the world would look very different from your side, right? Yeah. Uh, now, I would like to understand the various different leadership styles that you saw. True. And what is one common denominator across, uh, if you can share that. So how many leaders sure. did you work as uh, their um, executive, right hand <laughs> man, eyes, ears sure, uh, of sure. the company? So tell me. Okay, so a brief one. I started as a compliance professional and for almost seven, eight years I was uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. And I, I rose fairly well in, in that profile. I was heading one of the biggest prop trading desk as compliance head. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I was spotted and the CEO there kind of said that, why don't you start working with me directly? Mm. And I was like, I was looking for that. <laughs> now that you're saying I yeah. have no other option but to just jump into it. But what was it quality he noticed in you? Yeah. So, was it hard work, long hours, non-complaining? <laughs> no. So, what was it? Yeah, so the intangible again. We'll yeah. come back to the intangible. So he mm. always kind of, you know, mm. uh, so he spoke to me twice. Mm. And he said, Nishal, I think you can do much more than what you are doing. Mm. Right? And what did he observe? One, obviously he knows better. But what I feel is that while I was doing compliance, I always felt that it was important for me to not stick to what I was kind of supposed, supposed to do, but also understand the overall business, how it works, mm -hmm. what are the different dynamics that are playing and why then is the requirement of say compliance and how well we can support the business. Because mm -hmm. end of the day, if you don't have business, mm -hmm. everything else is a uh, my product, right? Yeah. So it's important to support the business and for that you need to understand that. And when I would speak or I would contribute my bit, uh, people would observe that he understands much more than just his particular role. Mm. And that obviously requires investment of time, energy, interest. And that's what I think he spotted. And he said that you don't limit yourself to the function that you are playing. You are already contributing more. Then might as well, let's build the organization in a different way. I need support. Why don't you join me? Hmm. I think that's the intangible that he saw. That one hmm. is going beyond his, uh, you know, hmm. uh, mandate and trying to understand things. And if this person is eager enough, then he's the best fit, probably. Right. Right. No, that's very interesting. You know, going beyond your own uh, borderline, we all create. Ye yeah. mera kaam nahi hai. You know, kisi aur se karwalo. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and then there is a spark out there, a curious person who wants to do more, wants to learn more, and doesn't shy away from hard work, doesn't have a comfort zone because he True. or she operates out of a comfort zone. So these are the elements that truly stands out. Uh, but the point to nail here is, various leadership styles that you, yeah. uh, you know, experienced. So, uh, this is very interesting. And uh, I think the best thing that I have, I have gained from all these experiences. So, I'll give you the three people I have worked with so far. One, as I said, the CEO who was looking at the entire asset management cluster at Edelweiss. Then the regional, which is not really regional, it's practically mm -hmm. uh, Europe, Middle East, Asia, Africa, the person who leads that you know, mm. vertical in the next organization that I, par I was part of. And now I work with an organization where they're building or they're moving the phase two of their uh, presence and they're building a large organization, extremely unique in the way they're operating. So I'm working with the COO's office. Mm. And, and in all the three, what I'm actually doing is I'm dealing with the most critical stakeholders uh, who are the directors, who are the CEOs, who are the le functional heads who have spent mm. 20, 30 years doing what they were doing. And then you are getting things done through these people, hmm. right? So this is what I have, I'm doing practically. Now my learnings, with these leadership people, one thing that I think is extremely important in their uh, way of operating is that they are ruthless with themselves. You will never find them saying, 
I'm a human. It's okay. Fact is, yep. they are ruthless mm. with themselves. Mm. How they use their time, mm. how they are learning what they have to say, unlearn, mm. or they have to understand to become mm. a you know bigger leader. Three, they are always looking for the next challenge to be addressed. Now we see a lot of people being burnt out. Mm. A lot of people, you know, kind of broken down. So this aspect mm. is for a lot of people. But when you see these people, these are the ones who are. looking forward to the next challenge the next morning so one thing that we have to understand is mm. they are grappling as much as anyone else in the organization at any hierarchy because while we we have time to grow mm. they, they have to deliver they have to deliver every single day wow you 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 right? hit the nail actually absolutely and that's mm. why uh something that someone like me has to learn or anyone else has to learn is how well can i solve their problems hmm. right and so they if you see one thing that is common in them they are brilliant at picking up the right people hmm. they are brilliant at or at least they try to be you know uh, people who try to see people who are really there to you know play a certain role hmm. contribute and they are very good at that and for and that's why we see a lot of people getting disproportionate amount of salaries and esops hmm. etc it's not because Hmm. everyone is a brother and sister <laughs> right there are people who are going beyond their mandate hmm. who are literally investing themselves beyond what is expected of them and these are the people who look at those people because all said and done in today's time most of the organizations are built or run on the people who are managing the organization right and if you don't have those people in right place hmm. then you can't succeed and so they know that you have to get those right people on board and move forward your profit comes from people and that can only come uh, when the people are motivated yeah. there's a culture of great respect and x y z and um, uh, so the point is that will there ever be a balance sheet that will cover up for the intangibles and put a value to it okay so let let's look at it this way the crux of everything is the balance sheet hmm. right now either you contribute or you don't hmm. right so these people definitely as i said are excellent at looking at and finding right people mm. right and for people who are committed and it may not necessarily be their core team even on the larger scale they are always good and they are always looking for them to perform better mm. that's that's clear in my mind okay okay while we hear a lot of things from outside let's understand that there are parts of the puzzle which have to be put in place mm. and some people might be on the wrong side Hmm. but that doesn't mean everyone is on the wrong side right so it is important for them to make sure that these people get the best environment and grow numbers will always remain numbers and uh, and companies will chase them yeah but i think the awareness of leaders and leadership about the in- harnessing the intangibles yes. is something yes. that the process is on and leaders Absolutely. have become reflective right yeah. in fact i'll give you yeah. an example jyoti it's yeah. a, it's a brilliant point that you've raised so you've made a brilliant point jyoti so i was speaking to a ceo Mm. Uh, who was a trader earlier financial markets trading comes very naturally and these are the people who really generally you know grow mm. up so and i was having a chat with him and i was seeing his personality far different from any other leader who was earlier a trader he actually explained this to me he mm. said i took 4 years to move out of my trading mindset mm. to a ceo mindset mm. you know which means that as a trader you have to take quick decisions mm. you just have to hit it and move forward mm. be it loss be it profit mm. take a decision and move forward mm. when it comes to people you have to spend time yes you have to build it slowly yes if you're building it for long term you have to be even more patient yes you have to make the environment or ecosystem conducive enough for people to grow right and this requires time mm. and as i said earlier even the ceos are grappling every single day no, that that's a great insight So you know? that's how you know they learn, they unlearn, mm. and they grow. And if you are on the very early stages of their journey, yes. maybe you may have some heat. Yes. If they have evolved enough, maybe you are in the best place in their organization. No, fantastic! That's great. Uh, in fact, there is one portion that we would like to definitely cover with uh, Nishal with you. Is during COVID times. Um, at least i saw that uh, people picked up their passions and their hobbies and made career out of it uh covid did lot of things to lot of people it did uh, different things to us right with regards to what we reflected what is the a sense of life what is meaning of work and stuff like that it led to a growth or a 
uh, as we say in the uh, in the startup space a category creator came in called gig economy yeah yeah your quick insight on what is this gig economy and why it is so important for us to take it so seriously sure yeah okay so fundamentally hmm. a gig earlier used to be known as somebody performing say in a pub or a lounge hmm. where they would sing right right so it would be one song or whatever hmm. you know couple of hours and the story is done hmm. and they were all freelancers hmm. if you look at and that has just kind of you know evolved into everyone who is being freelancer or two aspects of it the gig economy is divided into two parts one is the ubers and the olas of the world hmm. where people are doing a uh, base level work they are freelancers but they are doing a base kind of you know they are working right. with some organization tied up with some organization the second is the part which is more intellectual in nature say designing composing and you know legal services so on and so forth so we'll focus probably on the on the you know the higher side of that because the audience is that right so that has now become a very important part of the gig economy and and the assumptions are that by 2023 around 455 billion worth business will be done by the gig economy 455 billion dollar dollars worth business will be done by the gig economy wow So this is the potential, and that's where we are going. And we are in two thousand twenty-three end. So we yeah. probably will have those and numbers. And it's a gig too. So it is. Part this is of a gig. billion-dollar industry. Absolutely. Yes. Be my own boss is not that as easy. Exactly. Exa- okay. Exactly. So right. we recently had Narayan Murthy <laughs> saying that people should work for seventy hours, yeah. and people are screaming and shouting about right. it. Right. Right. If you are in the gig economy, you must be kind of working even more than that. Ask me. So if you want to be your own boss, be prepared for ninety hours a week if they exist. I don't totally. know. Totally. <laughs> totally. But that good point you brought out, the Narayan. murti um um mentioning uh, about 70 hours a week i would definitely like to know about your view but what i think that what and first of all mujhe bahut acha laga ki ye itna seriously liya gaya hai i'm glad ki matlab uh, people <coughs> while they are against it or pro is separate thing but it's become a burning topic what i understood and what i reflected was that i think the bigger message is that get used to a working hard yes uh, somewhere that slip through the cracks right true, true. and the whole culture that co- came in of co- during covid the work from home did brought in some over flexibility in yes. our routine and we getting hooked on to that true so your quick take on narayan murthy uh, sure. is is he serious about 70 hours or there is a larger message of um, that you know it's not going to be easy yeah, yeah. With the world we are walking into you need to kind of absolutely get your act together so i'll i'll give my perspective on what he was saying and mm. i i don't think i'm too way, you know off when i say that so one he's saying this with a context like you rightly pointed out during covid we came into the models of two days working hybrid working remote working right where the youngsters and so this message was practically for the youngsters mm. he was very categorical in saying that that the youngsters want to sit at home and work mm. people are looking only for work from home and the remote uh, you know jobs now they don't realize that okay you might just have a certain skill which you can implement right now and move forward and you get your work done mm. but there is something in the office environment where you really really learn things on the job right, right? and what he's trying to say is in those mm. 70 hours that you're going to put in so 70 hours is just a number yeah. he's saying it's the early stage of your career where you have to invest yourself disproportionately mm. to become a champion of your game right and that's what he was indicating and anyone who doesn't agree to it two years three years down the line will realize that probably they haven't got, they have lost a lot of time in their on their hands by the time you are 30 35 you'll realize that there are a lot of skills be it people skills uh, functional skills you wouldn't have gained and you would have gained if you were in the office like somebody spotting me to join him as a uh, mm. ceo spotting me to join him for his activities if i was sitting at home he could have not even known no, my name yeah totally I think you made a brilliant point here, so, right? Invest in your career, and this is how absolutely. you invest in your career. Absolutely, there's no rocket science putting number of hours at work, or it's it's for yourself. And uh, the sooner you do it, the sooner you build up a building blocks for your career, and that requires time. And I think that's what Nishchal is trying to tell all of you. Great, now, Nishchal, we uh, gr- having a great conversation with you. I'm going to call for a gravity ball, mm-hmm. where. Uh, we have received random questions and we're going to pick let's see what you you pick up what is your fortune cookie in questions can we have the 
So we Bold have been please. told that we'll not have jargons here. Yeah. Gravity bowl <laughs> Gravity is a jargon bowl. for me. Is it? <laughs> Actually, the whole setup is Europa. Yeah. Okay. So Europa takes you into the mystics of universe, right? The, the, the whole ether concept yeah, of my... I, I appreciate so, the, coin, the terms that you have coined. But I'm just saying that I'm not using <laughs> jargons, but Jyoti yeah. is. <laughs> That's my industry's vocabulary, <laughs> so to say. But yeah, I had to give it a different name, you sure. know, like a crystal ball to ho gaya. Mm-hmm. But gravity, e, e questions mein gravity hai. Yeah. So I, I invite you to pick up a question. Sure. Let's see what it uh, is. Okay, so what are some of the earliest signs of burnout and do leaders get burnt out? What yeah, do they do? Brilliant question. I think it's it's a very important question. Brilliant, of course, but a very yeah. important question. Can we question. just uh, read... Uh, One, it is a reality. Burnout is a reality. Uh, And some early signs that I have observed is that, and not only leaders, even, you know, everyone else, the moment you start realizing that you are being sarcastic about your situations, Mm. you are not enthusiastic enough about new initiatives or things that are happening in your organization. Like critical. Critical, important things. Okay. Right? That's when you realize that there is something missing in the way you are functioning. Mm. Uh, which is not completely good for you. Okay. Good for an organization, yes, of course, but even for you. Okay, so if one observes a lot of self-critical uh, thinking process yes. that has kick-started uh, and, uh, and it's leading to negativity at work and yes. stuff, yes. Uh, is the first sign. Yeah. Yeah. How a suddenly a positive speaking person uh, who is very, very proactive and all have started to be critical exactly. of... Things. Exactly. Okay. And and the person can be critical about himself or herself. Okay. Or can be critical about the various things that are happening in the organization. Okay. Right? Just pass on those, you know, small bit of sarcastic comments and all. Okay. It's for us to realize that there is something off in what Why we are doing. Ha- now, there are people who don't realize this. Mm. There are people who kind of, you know, feel that everything is okay, mm. but I am not being given enough, given enough due. Oh, I am yeah. not being looked upon various things right. but the fact is if your performance is going down mm. right for whatever reasons and it's not that we are all machines right mm. our performances do dip that's because there is something you know maybe kind of a burnout that's going inside you mm. where you have lost the motivation to do even your routine things right, right? those are the signs of burnout either you take a sabbatical mm. or just have conversations with relevant people mm. and get a different you know say maybe a profile or some Relax really? time. Yeah. And we are all humans. Even the organizations have enough humans. Absolutely. Right? Things can change if mm. you address it. But if you remain in that zone of negativity, mm. it's very difficult to kind of, you know, for yourself to come out of it. I'm not even talking about the organization. So tell me one thing, like the second part of the questions, do leaders get burnt out? Of course they do. Of course they do. Mm. See, as I said, they have to deliver every day. Mm. They are being judged on everything that they do. Mm. And I have just written an article and it's got published where I pointed this particular thing out, out loud and clear. In today's time, a leader one has to deliver. Mm. Two is under constant scrutiny from social media, from the employees. Investors, Anything can yeah. be gone out. Mm. Yes, investors. I mean, imagine the amount of pressure that one individual is holding and is not allowed to express. Mm. If you see a leader kind of behaving abruptly even mm. in a normal environment and is captured on a camera mm. imagine the kind of flack the person gets right right and the reputation i mean we have seen you know stock prices going down of organizations where the Absolute. leaders behave you know misbehaved yes. B- very good point absolutely right? so right. this is the sensitivity or the criticality at which they are operating now to expect these people to be robots mm. is unreal right so they do go through all these patches some people are able to recover some people, and, and I mean, some people have taken innovative routes like you have done. You've moved into a creative space. I have seen some leaders of, you know, top global organizations becoming angel investors because mm. they've made enough money. Yeah. But they felt it's time that they now kind of, you know, hang off their boots, mm. take a little more relaxed environment, but still want to be a part of the game. I asked this uh, question uh, to all my guests. And by now, you know what ether is, right? By ether, because of ether, why yes. I assume. It's your fifth element. It's your Akash, right? And whatever we fill into our ether, the vibes, the energy stays. Yeah. What did you remove in 2023 from your ether? Okay. And what is it that you're going to add in 2024? Uh, so it's a very deep question. Uh, maybe unconsciously what I've you know, 
done in this particular year already done in this particular year is to move out of the ordinary that i was doing or the patterns that i was used to uh connecting to my ted talk uh i feel that we are so used to what we are used to hmm and that's why ai is going to rule us hmm. if we remain used to what we are used to and wow. i realized this sometime back and i felt that let's break these patterns in this particular year i have done three solo trips mm. to absolutely random places mm. abroad in india uh, if somebody was coming good not coming all fine i went and did these things which were not very natural to me right i would generally go with my family i would generally if i had friends coming to say kedarnath my kedar trip was a solo trip wow right i had uh, the people i went with those 20 people i went with i knew no one So, and i landed up making hmm. 20 friends wow so will it be fair to say that uh, is it uh, am i reading it right in 2023 you filled your ether with adventure yeah. Yeah. that means you removed hesitation or anything that was holding you back or anything which i was slave to slave when to when it comes to a habits. pattern habits okay that's a very interesting point itself and what do you think you are going to fill in 2024 your ether with okay okay more adventure maybe no. i will some add, some <laughs> so i want to continue this pattern thing right okay. i want to continue uh and what i've thought of mm. i don't know how will i will execute this i've already planned a few things mm. so one i am i have joined a latin dance class which wow. anyone who knows me knows that nishtha where is, is it can i join <laughs> <laughs> for sure most welcome looking for a partner <laughs> absolutely latin matlab wonderful <laughs> absolutely so i've already awesome. joined anyone who knows me knows that he is not the dance kind okay okay But I've already done that. This is so interesting. Yeah. Next two things that I'm planning to do, mm. I'm going to play lawn tennis and badminton alternate days for the entire week. Absurd, but I just want to make sure that there's no pattern, right? It's an experiment. I don't know how successful I'll be. I just want to see if if we can live without these patterns. And we are at the end of the, our interview, but the questions are still there. So don't be surprised if you get a second invitation of interview from my side. <laughs> and is my it pleasure. पहले मैं काम complete नहीं किया क्या? ऐसा नहीं. It's, it's totally my pleasure. Wonderful. Uh, and something that you would like to tell to, and this is especially for your message, looking directly into the camera, would be for your ex, for your exam, uh, for your um, message to Generation Alpha. On uh, अभी financial market से हो तो एक financial market का question बनता है कि what is your advice to Generation Alpha on financial um, or, or say investment literacy sure, or financial sure. literacy why they should be taking it damn seriously absolutely so the landscape today is about people who want to be their own bosses or people who want to make a lot of money we have a lot of financial advisors or influencers that we see on social media. so information knowledge is not scarce it's your interest that matters and if you really want to live a free life that you know everyone is talking about you want to travel you want to do this you want to do that i'm doing latin class which is unique so if you want to do that you need to have your financial uh, potential put in place and that's the fundamental unfortunately in our academic space financial literacy is compromised but it's now available everywhere just go become financially stable and then you will have all the freedom to do what you want to do wow thank you on that note thank you so much nishal great wow. thank you